So I will be not uh, showing you pictures because I didn't have time <laughs> to, to make you presentations. So it will be only me and as a spotlight. And I have uh, some stories to tell you. Well, back in the times when I was a student in Paris, I used to live in a very small uh, apartment. Uh, there is a one-man show of uh, Gad El Malé about uh, French uh, flats, you know, and apartments and how small they are. Well, I used to live in this kind of apartment. So it was so small. When I opened the door, the door was touching the kitchen table. And the kitchen table was touching the couch. And the couch was touching the TV. And the TV was touching something that was supposed to be like a bathroom but it was actually a toilet and a sink and a shower and I had to go to the shower like that. Uh, so today with all the weight I gained, I, I would def never uh, fit in the shower. And uh, the bathroom uh, did not have a door, it had a curtain. And it was very difficult for my friends to go to the bathroom when they were at, uh, in my apartment because you could, could hear anything, everything. It was very hard for them. Uh, and it was so small. It's like in the in Gad show, uh, you you could just be sitting in the in the apartment, cook, throw your trash, and do everything in the same. Place. And in this apartment, just behind the couch, uh, there was a wall, and on that wall there was a door, and it was a closed door, and I didn't know what kind of door it was and to where it was leading. And it, for me, it was like uh, a fairy tale door, you know, the kind of door you, you could, cannot open and you don't know what, there is, what you can find behind. And for years, I didn't know what was behind that door. So I will get back to the door behind the couch. Don't forget about it. Three years um, ago, it's been 15 years now, I think, uh, since I left this apartment. Three years ago, I started um, a small project. Well, at first, it wasn't really a project. It was just a dare on Facebook. Uh, I had, at the time, four dogs. Now I have six. And I was complaining all the time on Facebook, posting pictures of them and saying that I couldn't find any nice beds or clothes for my dogs in Tunisia, and that everything I could find was China, uh, Chinese product, and it was very bad quality, and it was very expensive. And as you can imagine, uh, my friends on Facebook were sick of my dog's pictures <laughs> on Facebook. It was like when you have a baby and you have pictures of the baby and everyone is sick of it and no, no one can tell you they are sick of your uh, baby's photos. But one friend of mine told me she was sick of my uh, dog's photo and she sent me a message and she told me, stop complaining about the fact that you cannot find anything for your dogs. We don't care. First of all, and second of all, if you don't like what you are finding in Tunisia, why don't you start your own manufacture? So I said, challenge accepted. I didn't know anything about manufacturing. I had never set a foot in a manufacture. I had never bought any fabric in, in my life. I, I didn't know a thing about this kind of, um, of business. So I just went uh, to the souks. I just bought some jeans. I went to a manufacturer with a friend of mine and I started uh, to manufacture door beds. I did six of them. I put them on Facebook. I just wrote, uh, very soon uh, there will be a new brand of pet products in Tunisia, which, were, which was a lie because I wasn't intending uh, to make a brand or anything. And I sold them like in 10 minutes. So this is how it started. And uh, I launched finally a brand. Uh, the brand is Cocola. It's the name of one of my dogs. And I started this project. And it's been three years now. And I did put all my energy, my time, and my money in this project. But this isn't the story I am telling you. The real story is that when I was looking for manufacturers to manufacture my products, well, I discovered the whole world of textile manufacture in Tunisia, which I didn't know about. The only things I used to know was what I was seeing on TV about very big uh, factories uh, in Sahel and this kind of thing. And it is, I discovered a um, very specific category of people in Tunisia. 
it's women in very uh, power, uh, f sorry, in very uh, lower income neighborhoods, in very popular neighborhoods, women who have very small factories with two or three machines and who are struggling uh, to survive and to make their families survive. And these women are just amazing. I started to work with one of those and uh, very soon we became friends. And one day I was just uh, waiting for my products to be to take them and to, to I had the delivery and the guy came in and he asked her he showed her a bag and he asked how much time do you need and how much money will it cost me to manufacture a thousand bags I was very happy because I knew she needed the money and my project isn't money enough for her because uh, people weren't buying uh, that many pets pet beds at the time for now it's better so and she said I can't do those for you just go and there is another manufacturer bigger one like two streets away I was shocked how can a person refuse to take an order of a thousand back so I asked her why why didn't you accept this she told me I don't have any worker I only have two machines I can't take it I couldn't sleep that night because of that. Uh, I found it unacceptable just to say no because you can't afford to do it. So um, I bought her a machine which wasn't uh, expensive at all. It was the cheapest machine uh, I could find. And I said something with her like um, a partnership. I told her, okay, let's recruit some workers. I will pay them you will pay your rent and this is a machine it's not really a gift because I will benefit from it and the deal was we are splitting the fees and this is reducing my, uh, my the cost of my products and this is enabling her to take more orders and this year so it's been uh, two years now since I started working with her. She had great orders from, uh, from the school of her kids. She did the uniforms for the school. She did uniforms for kindergarten school. She did many things. And every time she has something new, she's telling me thank you because I didn't know uh, it was possible. And it wasn't that much money, actually. I didn't have to invest, really. It was 400 dinars. So this is the first story. The second story I'm going to tell you about, uh, it's about my mom. My mother is a great cook. She's a very, very good cook. And in July 2014, she posted on Facebook a photo of uh, the Asida. Everyone knows who or what. And the photo went viral, and it was shared uh, like 7,000 times, and many brands uh, for butter brands and uh, pastry brands stole the, the photos from her, her page, uh, from her profile, and posted it and everything. So she was flattered, but she was surprised. I wasn't surprised. I know I have a great mom and a great cook at home. And I told her, why don't you start your own blog? She was like, no. Me? A blog? What is a blog? Start your blog. Wait, you are preparing everyday great meals for us. Just take photos of them and put the recipes. People love food and they love uh, cooking. She didn't want to do it, so I started the blog and I started her a Facebook page. Uh, the, maybe some of you know the Facebook page. It's Delis Caprice. Today she has uh, 82,750 fans on Facebook and 7 million views on, his, uh, on her blog. So I didn't do anything for her, actually. I just opened the door that was already there. I went to the United States, and I met a woman. Uh, her name is Rita Kirk. She's a communication consultant, and she's a great woman. She became uh, a life mentor to me. So we were riding uh, in her car. Uh, we were shopping, we weren't doing anything uh, smart. And she asked me uh, that question was, what would be the biggest goal in your life? What would you like to do in your life? So I gave her an answer. I was surprised I, I did give because it wasn't what I was thinking. She was like, 
Do you want to be a great professor and fulfill a great career at your university? Or do you want to be a great businesswoman because you are doing all this thing with, for the pet products and everything? Or you want to be just there for uh, your students? Well, I said, I think that my biggest goal would be uh, to save my country because I think Tunisia has a great potential and I think we sh I should help uh, my country rise, but I'm nobody. I don't have any power. I don't have a political party. Uh, I don't have money. I don't have anything to, to, do, to do such thing. But this would be really the only thing I would like to dedicate my life to. Not the university, not the students, not Coca-Cola, not the pet products, anything. Just to help my country get better. And she said, well, I think uh, you are wrong because you are not nobody. And I think you are already doing that. Uh, well, she, I was thinking, I thought she was uh, really flattering me or cheering me up because I was very sad saying that. And she said, uh, remember these women you are helping uh, in, the, in the low income neighborhoods and uh, remember all these people you, are, you open door for us. If everyone cascades this kind of energy, if everyone started to open doors for other people, your country will rise. It's just a matter of a bigger energy. At this very moment, I remembered the couch and the door in my, in my French apartment. And I realized something crazy. The door actually never existed. I was mixing a memory with a dream I used to have when I was a student. When I was very stressed during the exams, and I know you are all students, I think, I was very stressed with the exams. I used to dream of a door behind the couch, and I used to have that dream like every single night. I didn't know what was behind the door. And in my memories, I got so confused. For years, I thought the door really existed. And for years, I was wondering what was behind it and why didn't I open it. When she said that, when she said you open doors for other people, and this is very important, I remember the door and I discovered it didn't exist. It just existed in my mind. So I think that every one of us has a hidden door in his mind and in his life and that everyone can help another person discover this door and open it. So I hope I will uh, give you inspiration to open the doors for one another. Thank you.